Yeah, direct misfire, aiming up hits Bend some spoon and sell liquor in the mix Follow along, stay up to date Comment, like, subscribe today Hello champs and welcome once again to another Direct Misfire Missive. Joining me today, as always, is Selick. Hey, hey. And special guest, Hugh. Hey friends, what's up? As we talk Clash of Kings 2019 magical artifacts and spells. So you pull up a seat, grab a drink, and let's get into it. But before we get into the meat and taters of this subject, we have a chore that we need to do. Our Direct Misfire Kings of War army that we're very slowly developing... So, last time we were here, we were talking about what kind of theme the army was going to be, and we landed on Cloud Giants. Now we have to decide what army-wide special rule these Cloud Giants are going to have. So, I've written up some choices, Okay. and we'll need to tell me why you should vote one way. Oh. I'll be the judge. Okay? So, the choices are, we've got the rule... Derp. So the average speed of the army is seven, as like normal giants, but they're not used to uh, ranked fighting that they they start to trip over themselves. So on a one, when they're moving, the unit instead is given a halt order and they take a point of unsavable damage that doesn't cause a nerf test. Mm. Right. So it's kind of like yellow bellied, but <laughs> but <laughs> way worse. Them. <laughs> More like animosity or something, right? Because every time they move. Yep. Every time they move. Instead of charging. So it's pretty bad, but their speed is faster than normal. Right. So okay. that's derp. Uh, next is speed flying. So being adept at harnessing the winds, because they're cloud giants, any flying unit with the speed flying rule, they can fly 12 inches, but they have to move at least six in the move phase, and they can't be given a halt, change, facing back or sidestep move orders. So they have to kind of move forward at least interesting and the last one is big breath so giants with this rule have the wind blast six uh, they can't be given other spells so you can't jib that thing um, but you can only cast it if you if the unit was given the halt or change facing move order so we've got right. derp speed flying and big breath what do you reckon Selick? gosh um, it depends before we answer how many flyers are there in this list? we don't know I thought they may be giants we don't know. They could be flying giants. They could be on their clouds. Mm. So I think derp straight out. Um, that's a no for me. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> boop, boop. No. Too, too many dice rolling and I roll a lot of ones. So that would mm, kill my yep. logic. The wind blast one does interest me. However, I think I have to go with the adept flying and the winds. I think that one has got its... Good pros and cons there. Speed flying, yeah. Speed flying, yep. So I think think I'm going to lock in that one. Yeah. And what about you, Hugh? I really like the speed flying too, uh, but I suppose it just depends how much flying there is in the list. Because if there's loads and loads of flying, maybe it's actually a bit too powerful. Whereas if there's a little bit, it's kind of like a fun thing, you know. And I can I could get around that, especially the idea of them like not being able to stop, kind of thing. They just keep shooting around. That's cool. Yeah, and you can't hide them very well either. So, what happens if they get discombobulated? Do you know disordered. What I mean? Disordered. Yeah, and then they can't fly. Well, it's only if they're able. I see. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Move every. Mm. They must move. Six inches. That one. I don't know. I think. We just don't see enough wind blasts in the game, and I like the idea of the big cloud giant like huffing and puffing and blowing people's houses down. You know, like that mm. sort of image of a cl- uh, like a face in the clouds being like <sighs> blowing blowing things around. So I, I think I like the wind blast thing. Having heaps right. of giants with wind blast sounds really cool. Well, I like all of these because I wrote the things, so <laughs> I could just overrule you both. Good death, but I think I'm going to go big breath as well because again, yeah, we don't see enough wind blast. Damn it! I always want to take it, so now you kind of. Are forced to take it. <laughs> hey, Poquena los dos, right? Yeah, that's Ooh. right. Maybe we can get a couple of people that have speed flying too. Mm-hmm. You can have derpy speed flying blowing dudes if you really want. Add that to our list. So we've got cloud giants with big breath units. Sounds okay, cool. with that rubbish out of the way, let's get into the magical artifacts. So we will go through this like we do our army reviews. We're going to run through each of the items that are in the book. Page 27, if you wanted to follow along, I can put a chime in there once we get to the This is the page Clash of Kings 2019 edition, of course. That's mm-hmm. right. So I'll just start off just by reading the first paragraph here that um, from the main rulebook, there's 
a few changes. So the following artifacts in the main book have been amended. The new rules are below the Ensorcer Armor, Brute of Keen Iron, and Medallion of Life. So those three from the main book, they have changed, but I think everyone knows that from now. So the first item on our list is the Healing Brute. It's only five points, and once per game, uh, when you give the unit with the Healing Brute in order, you can remove D2 points of damage previously suffered. So what do you reckon? I find this is a very easy item to take. Five points, you get a bit of healing mm. back. Yeah, it's pretty solid. When it was D3, I think it was like a bargain. Uh, now it's D2. I don't know. It's it's no longer my five-point um, item of choice. So it's still pretty handy, obviously, having your heals. But mm. Mm. Yeah, it's not um, my five-point item of choice out of the three that we've got available here. Um, but I do think... It's still really good, yeah. Like obviously, you need it on a night on a unit that's tough enough to actually realistically use its heal. Like if you've got a really no low nerve, you might not take it because you just sort of run away before you get a chance to use it. But I think yeah. or, like it should probably be called the forgetting brute because I think Spoon takes this every game, and I don't think I've ever seen him actually use it. That's like, true. Yeah. So if you forget it, none of the items are good. <laughs> true. <laughs> but yeah, if you if your unit has the healing brute and they're like. 14, 16, they're a regiment and they're on 10 damage. Healing one or two probably isn't going to do you any good because you're still very close to breaking anyway. Yes, indeed. It's only fairly limited circumstances where it's actually going to make a difference, isn't it? Because you kind of mm. you need to be wounded, column A. You know, prerequisite B, you need to heal in a meaningful enough way to then, you know, uh, downgrade a future route to a to only a waiver or, or a waiver to a nothing. Yeah. If either of the, if all of those things like all those ducks line up, then obviously it's the best five points you ever spent. But uh, yeah, it probably isn't going to all that frequently. I would have said not yes. bad on a high defense unit though. Yeah, it sort of sits in that weird bucket of if it's on a, a big defense unit like you've mentioned, Benson, then you're probably taking another item on that unit. Um, where I find that this does come in if you've got a a hero um, that's got a high nerve and um, you can chuck it on there and that sort of works but mm. yeah you can mm. see it being good on a hero and also like those armies with like the mummy units that have all the rules in the game already uh, from their formation and what have you and then they've got a heap of liches around healing them it's kind of just an extra healing thing they don't really need another item necessarily yeah. you know mm. but it's five points it's gap filler so it's, yeah, what's the yeah. next one? <laughs> uh, the next one's uh, the Stain Stone. So this one here just gives you a plus one to your waiver uh, nerve value for five points. It's not bad. I like to put this one on the units that have the large waiver spread. I think, is it Trolls, one of them that have? It's like a 13, Three, 16 yeah, or something like that. Yeah, it's a big one. And it's it, I think it, the Orcs as well have a couple of units that have quite a big gap. Yeah, my Ratkin mm. Brutes, I think, are something like 13, 16. Mm -hmm. That 13, and if they get wavered, like, they might as well be dead because mm. you, you pretty much get one charge of them and they get shot off in every game anyway. So, yeah, yeah it seems good on that kind of unit. And also, like, really fast, manoeuvrable units or units that are likely to be sitting in front of your unit because, obviously, this just adds to the waver nerve, not your uh, route. Right. So, it doesn't stop you routing. But if you're going to have a unit that's often that's got quite a low nerf that tends to sit in front of your other bros, then this can um, decrease that horrific waiver where you can't mm. then move half of your army because they're in the way. Yeah, I use um, the Staying Stone on my True Men as well. Uh, sorry, Forest Shamblers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because they've got a pretty big gap. I think it's an 1820, um, and I just find that it's five points. Gets them up to 1920. Sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a stone hard woody. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, Hugh, what's next? Orcish Skull Pole is uh, another five-pointer. The unit has the Brutal special rule. If the unit causes damage in melee at the end of the melee phase... Am I meant to say melee or melee? I've never really worked that out for some reason. Melee? Melee? It depends on what kind of part Malois. of France you're from. Okay. At the end of the melee phase, it must roll <laughs> a single die. On a three or less, the Skull Pole is destroyed and provides no further benefit for the remainder of the game. I think this is a great item. Even even if it was just after the first use, it's destroyed every time, never mind the 50-50, it'd still be pretty good because just that plus one to your combat resolution effectively or whatever you want to call it, like plus one to that 
nerve roll when you're going in. Yeah. Pretty pretty nice for five points. You're going to reliably use it whenever the unit charges, whether it has an effect or not. Obviously, may not, but it, it puts those sort of borderline units that have a medium number of attacks and strength, if that makes mm. sense. So, that's, so you're not going to be like rolling and just guaranteeing a break or almost never getting it. Like it, it just tips that little bit over the edge and it changes the statistics of breaking something fairly noticeably. Yeah, I love, love And it. it's also good like it's, uh, you're not paying for brutal all the time because sometimes you might not even get into combat because other things are doing it for you. So it's just a nice chief way of getting it. Yeah, I strap it on an elven prince on a horse. Um, Mm -hmm. So they're effectively my bit of chaff there. And when you do charge it into a small unit, you've obviously got your three attacks and then your brutal's just a plus one there. Or you could just throw it into a a combined charge to just Mm. get that brutal in there. Yeah, it's got so many benefits there. Yeah, in that way it sort of gives brutal in a way to most of the units around it, doesn't it? Because it can charge in with them and then you've Mm. basically got that brutal to add to the combat. That's good, yeah. Uh, so breaking news, I just interneted how do you pronounce that word, and the internet says melee. 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 Yeah. I've heard it as melee and melee, but melee, which apparently is the right one, I don't actually hear it that, that way very often. Well, that's just what it said, so I'm going to stick with melee. Well, everything you read on the internet is correct, so I'm, I'm down with that. I listened to it that time. Anyway, uh, what we have next <laughs> is the, oh, what is that? The whip of celery. Whip of celerity. I like salary, though. That's, that's good. All right. We'll refer to it as salary from now on. So with the salary whip, it's 10 points. Uh, so while declaring and measuring a charge, the unit has an additional one inch added to their maximum charge distance. So if you're speed five, instead of having a charge 10, it's charge 11, which is okay. 10 yeah. points. I, don't th- I wouldn't use it, though. I'd rather just give them extra speed. Yeah, for for 15 points, you just get plus one speed straight up, right? Which Mm. is actually two inches extra on the charge, um, Mm -hmm. as well as one extra inch when you're not charging. Mm. Two two extra inches if you're at the double. So for the extra five points, uh, seems an awful lot better, doesn't it? But but this is a... this is a tiebreaker situation, I think. So this yeah. is used in specific circumstances, like where you're vanguarding and you've got, say, movement six. So you're going up 12 and then you can go 13 and hit something. You know, if you're immediately opposite, you're 24 apart. This mm. allows you to break that tie kind of thing and get those turn one charges and silly shit like that. And also, I reckon it goes in armies which try to have this alpha strike kind of situation and you've got the the swiftness business on someone else. Mm. Yeah, that's every time I've seen this used in other people's lists, um, they've got the speed on a flying unit and then for the support flying unit, they've got the whip of salary on it as well so that mm-hmm. they've got two super quick units that can out, um, outrange other flyers. Celerity, by the way, it's a old school word and it means swiftness of movement. Whip of swiftness of movement. Celery whip, there you go. It should be called the whip of encouragement, right? <laughs> <laughs> Move faster, you jackass. Anyway, what's next? Uh, the Chalice of Wrath. Um, so that's effectively just gives your uh, unit that you've got at Fury, which is pretty handy. Nice and it always nice. bites me. Yep. So the Chalice of Wrath, right? Gives the unit furry, makes the unit into special furries. Yep. What else is it competing with, though, in that 15 point slot? Well, shall I say the answer to that? <laughs> the next <laughs> item. <laughs> and uh, the the swiftness one is 15 points. Courage. Yeah. Which is Courage, yeah. Pretty which good. Which is pretty good. Uh, just straight up brutal. Straight up brutal, yeah. And that's it. That's all, yeah. 15 pointers. Okay. So, Fury units that are slow and have a reasonable chance. Things like stone golems and what have you that are really tough, they're designed to be ambles. They're designed to be charged. Probably quite frequently, they don't route but end up, you know, on a lucky roll, they get wavered or mm. or what have you. Or even on an average roll from a good unit because they're so tough, they only end up wavering. And then getting Fury would be pretty rad to charge, to charge back. Mm. But you need a decent number of attacks because... That way, your charge is meaningful. You need a decent amount of toughness because you're, in theory, taking the charge, and you probably need to be reasonably slow. And I think it's some sort of you'd, you'd like to have some sort of crushing on that unit because who cares if you're fighting back with the wiffle bats on Fury? Mm. Yeah, I like these ones on Cav units actually. I think that's probably the best, so they can actually charge out. So they get shot up in the first turn, and uh, they just get wavered, and they just sort of sit there and then die in the second turn, opposed to sort of charging in. 
Yeah. As long as they don't rely too heavily on Thunderous and stuff, I guess, because obviously you're not getting that. I think yeah. Trolls would be the perfect unit to have this item because they've got that large waiver range. They got crushing too as well and regen, so hopefully they're holding and they're healing some dudes back and then they can fury into yep. the combat again. I think you're right. That's the perfect unit. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, Hans Sanguinary Scripture or Sanguinary if you prefer. Gee, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> tricky words in these, these <laughs> items, isn't there? This unit gains life leech one special rule or if it has already if it already has life leech. It is increased by one to a maximum of two. I don't know so what to think of Life Leech. This is pants. Complete pants. It's it's still regenerating damage, but it's, you get one point if you damage other people in combat. And you're already damaged. And that's 15 points. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the healing brew for 10 extra points. <laughs> so that's that's yeah. kind of how I see it. Because, I mean, imagine healing brew gives you two points back, right? Then you need to have, for the Life Leech one to be as good... You need to have been damaged. You need to have been in two combats in which you caused damage. And now it's as good as the Healing Brew, which is 10 points less. Mm. I guess hordes, so they're in the way and they're probably going to get in combat for a while, like maybe three, four turns. Mm. Maybe. But again, it's only one point each turn. But if you combine that with, say, a unit that has maybe Iron Resolve, then you're getting two points. Defense five or six. I think there's a few units that have Defense five, six, Iron Resolve as well. Yeah. I feel like you kind of put this on units that are really tough and have a life leech already or something just to boost mm. them up a little bit more if you don't have any better item to put on them. You know, your soul reavers and that kind of thing. That kind of thing. Sanguinary, by the way, is a nice word. Sanguine meaning <laughs> blood. Sanguinary. sanguinary involving or causing much bloodshed. I looked that one up, although I did know more or less what it meant. I wanted the uh, dictionary version. Mm. Yeah, bloodshed time. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of this one. Um, so the life leech, you can upgrade most of your undead units for 10 points to get it from 1 to 2, so, yeah. yeah I like how this has a maximum of 2, because it would be way too OP if you already had life leech 2, leech two and it went to 3. Yeah. Yeah, it's, this item's, this item's completely I think crap. it's, uh, the Lady I- Alona, whatever her name is, um, her life leech has helped her out a few times, against me, unfortunately, but... Yeah, it's good in the grind, and particularly if you've got an aggressive character, but I'm just not sure about 15 points to get it on a unit. Like, there's better things to spend your 15 points on. Yeah, maybe like a really fast character that you think you're going to get into combat like four or five times in the game. Yeah. But, yeah. Me. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Okay. Next up in our 20-point bracket, we have the Aegis of the Elohai. So this unit gains the Iron Resolve special rule, and if it's already got it, then when it triggers, it heals two points instead of one. Mm, for 20 points, yeah. I think only on units that have Iron Resolve already. Yeah, that's right. I don't think you want to just give it to it another... Because it's like, otherwise, it's, it's just like the Sanguinary Scripture, except more expensive. <laughs> yeah, I thought Iron Resolve was a bit potato until I actually played against it when you've got the army-wide rule. And yeah, it, it sort of forces you in a way to focus your stuff on one unit so that you don't just keep chipping away and doing bugger all if, you, if that makes sense I mm, suppose it depends yeah. on your kind of army like ogre shooters don't really care but if you've got an army that does a heap of small instances of damage it's really strong so taking it up to two on a big unit it's okay it's it's an awful lot better than life leech but it's still not exactly anything to write home about yeah yeah it could be useful on like your tree herders like really high defense and high nerve, mm-hmm. so they're taking a lot of tests. But twenty. Because I like Iron Resolve on the Encolid on battle platform because that's defense six, yeah. feel a seventeen with Iron Resolve. I know that's it's triggered my opponents a few times when they damage it. They do one point of damage because it's defense six, and then it just heals it back for Iron Resolve. Yeah. If <laughs> yeah. I could have made that too, that'd be great. <laughs> Anything with defense six has got to love it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. It's got its place. It's not as it's not great, but it's not rubbish, I, I guess. Yeah. Very, very specific use. Mm. Uh, what's next? So the next one is the Dragon Shard Steel. So shield. Um, <laughs> so basically, I don't know what was coming out there. <laughs> um, basically, uh, on your halt or pivot orders, you increase your defense by plus two to a maximum of six plus until the start of the next turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I quite rate this one. Um, Dragon Shard Shield being one of the trickier items to say 10 times fast but dragon mm. shield, dragon shield, dragon. yeah no <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> you devolve into pretty quickly but uh yeah you want this on units with defense four i think 
specifically. Yeah, uh, like it's wasted. Defense three, even like because there's a lot of berserker units that are defense three that you can just say bugger it, charge me. Yeah, but you also want to charge with berserkers. You need to actually halt to use it. You do, but if you're because they're infantry and they've got a a large cavalry or cavalry charge incoming. Mm. Yeah, I could see it in that kind of circumstance, and that is. Ten, tends to be when it use, when you use it. I like this on like a horde of because of of course I'm ratkin. I like it on my horde of uh, just basic rado warriors, which is mm-hmm. it, it's pretty it's pretty decent. I, I find it pretty effective. Like it doesn't make it into the list every time, but because that unit's role is not so much being aggressive and marching up the board, but more sort of chilling on the objectives toward the back of the board when you have those missions with objectives at the back. Mm. This is pretty nice because it, it's not just halt. You can also pivot. So I find that the nasty quick units that get down there and challenge them early, they can usually more or less see off because they're a cheap horde. But then when the big nasties come toward the end of the game and try to take that objective off them, which they could normally do, being able to spend just the one turn going, I'm going to rotate to face you with my big long frontage and go defense six. Good luck getting rid of me now. It's pretty good. Like, it is it is really solid. If For 20 points, if it basically reads, and in certain circumstances it does, if it basically reads, unit does not die when I otherwise would. Mm. Uh, I, I think that's yeah. kind of what it reads, uh, especially when you're getting charged by a couple of nasty things because defense yeah. six is still legit, man. I actually quite like these on the Skeleton Warriors. Um, so they can halt, get the plus two um, to go up to defense six, and then surge them into combat, which oh, is a cheeky. pretty good shenanigan. So all of a sudden they're getting their 25 attacks uh, straight in for uh, 170 points or so, and they've got Leech Life. And then when they get counter charged, they're at defense six. So um, Yeah, even better when you get to charge as well. That is, yeah, that yeah. is cheeky. Having your cake and eating it as well. I like cake. Yeah, I would put it on zombies as well, but that, once again, it only goes up to defense five. Mm. Yeah, I think you really want to go to six on a relatively cheap unit because it just makes them cut well above their weight. Mm. Mm. Uh, Particularly a horde, of course, because they're going to get a lot of attacks directed at them. Bearing in mind, of course, that if you're fighting a real nasty that's crushing three or more, it's probably just doing... It's going to choose three, yeah. 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 All right, what else we got? Encircled armor. Encircled, you mean? Encircled armor. In what is so- going on with these words? <laughs> <laughs> in sorcery armor, bloody hell, that's a stupid word. Uh, this artifact can only be used by units of type hero infantry. The hero's defense is improved by one to a maximum of five. Twenty points. No. So this is one that got nerfed. It used to be you could have it to defense six. It used to read yeah. if you have a defense five hero with the wings or that flies or <laughs> that is just fly. generally really expensive and good, yeah. make it defense six. But now it reads don't take this item. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, pretty much. I think the reality. I think it's just overpriced. If this was a ten point item, even a fiver, it's on a hero infantry machine. You're not giving him any. It has other to be item. infantry, yeah. So you're not mounted. You're not a monster. You're not like a meaningful combat hero most of the time. And yeah, yeah the the ones that are. The ones that are really nasty, the heroes that are infantry, have like the wings of the honey maze or something like that. Yeah, you want to give them something their decent movement, but you can't take when you take the defensive items. So, like, what are you? Yeah. You're a wizard or something, or like? Yeah, or but like even a- then, like, if you've got trying to make your wizard defense five for twenty points, have a look at the spells that you can get. Like that, you can get weakness now that's been increased uh, that we'll talk about later. But that's you can get weakness for twenty points. And it does effectively the same thing if you were targeting that unit that's charging you or shooting at you. Yeah, I don't know. Rubbish armor, that's what it's called. Don't take it. Next, (laughs) we've got the (laughs) armor of measured force, 20 points. So the unit will always damage enemy on a 4 plus in melee, regardless of modifiers. Mm -hmm. So all the units that don't have a crushing or thunderous hitting high def units, force. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, I've never taken this item. I've put it on units in army lists and ended up taking it off a number of times for some reason it seems to be it's this is one of those ones you know how you often have those pet items that ends up being your first cut <laughs> yep. this, this seems to be that item often for me i think this item is really good on paper yeah for, so it's, for those it's all berserker right. units and stuff as you say yeah it's got to have a lot of attack so i've seen this used on big zombie hordes because they've got like 40 attacks or whatever it is and then effectively 50% of those are going to wound where it does 
come back is when you're trying to kill zombies. Um, and instead of defense three, you're now defense four. Mm. So you're buffing your opponent's defense three units. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But still, you've got weight of attacks on that. So yeah, yeah. that doesn't matter. I think you don't take it because you're putting Bane Chant and Crushing Strength on things. Yeah, that could be why. Yeah. And if you've got Crushing, then most things are Defense 5. There's not as many Defense 6 now. Yeah, that's right. Still bring it down to 4. Yeah. But yeah. my army does actually often struggle with Defense 6 things on those rare times that they come up. So it'd be nice mm. to have an option against them. Whether you can actually position the unit such that they get in combat with said Defense 6 thing is a different thing entirely, I guess. But yeah. yeah. Also, if your meta has a lot of high defense, this, this increases in value. But I think for us at the moment, in where we play at the moment, it's probably not as valuable. Mm. Yeah, probably the other thing that's troublesome about it is that you can get crushing one for... Uh, 25 points. 25 points. Uh, is it 30, is it? Oh, yeah. so, uh, I thought it was 25 nah. for some reason. Yeah, right. So you're paying 10 extra points for that because the majority of the time when this works, it is basically crushing one, right? Because as you say, yeah. it's usually defense five. Yeah. Uh, except crushing one obviously is good against things that are defense four and things that are defense three as mm-hmm. well, which this isn't. So, yeah. And next up for 20 points, we have the Mournful Blade. A blade of mourning. Mm. So effectively, this one here can only be taken by a hero with the individual rule. And while attacking other individuals in melee, um, it doubles its attacks. Assassins. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Get it's it. it's good. It's a bit sad. But yeah, it's only because it's individuals um, attacking other individuals. I don't know, for 20 points. But I think unlike a, a mounted dude whose job is to kill other heroes... Sticking this guy on there. Yeah, I think this is solid. I think this is one of those items where there's just there's not actually many of these that just give you a bit of a buff to attack. Yeah, uh, mm. double the number is great if you've got say five. I mean four's four's pretty damn acceptable as well. It depends what you are to hit as well because if you're like four plus to hit, this is only and you've only got say three attacks or so. You're probably better yeah. off with just the five point item that just lets you reroll one missed attack which is going to give you like a similar amount of value. But if you're like four or five attacks, especially if you're threes to hit as well, then this, yeah, this could really pack a punch. What I what I like to do with this one is whack it on an assassin. <laughs> That's surprise, surprise. <laughs> and then take, um, oh, what's it called? Teleport, yep. which we'll get to later. But you teleport that bad boy across the board and then he's just hanging out threatening fools with his mournful blade i've done it a few times i've never killed anything with it though because what i do is i run in with my eight attacks and i just fluff the dice but <laughs> it's still all rubbish <laughs> one of these days it's gonna work and then someone goes in with four attacks and does better than the eight attacks guy for some stupid reason but yeah it's a bit sad but one of these days it's gonna work the half-breed champ in the abyssal dwarfs is fantastic choice for this item because mm. it's i mean speed at melee three Six attacks with crushing three. Yeah. He doing threes, 12 on an individual is a dead individual. Barack Obama's like cabinet minister or something, right? That's what... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That yeah, I've seen it on a vampire lord, a mounted vampire lord as well, so it's gone mm. up to Ooh. 16 attacks. Oh, which shit. Which is pretty brutal. For 20 points. Yeah, that's pretty... Pretty eight. good. Yeah, so what's that? Puts him up to like... 300... I don't know. It has to be sure. individual. <laughs> so it's at its best on a cavalry character, right? Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you also want to make sure that they kind of get in there and choose who they want to fight. Yeah. Mm. And I think getting the extra height as well so you can see over your height ones. Puts them at 240. Uh, but then you've got the mount that's an extra 15, 255. It's yeah. a lot of points. That's but vampire lords vampire. are expensive. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess that brings us to the Zephyr Crown. Yes. Zephyr? Yeah. Zephyr, right? Zephyr. Zephyr Crown. Uh Heroes with the wind blast spell only. Ah, oh, that makes so much sense. Because you know what Zephyr happens. means, of course. Everyone knows what <laughs> Zephyr means, right? Yes. It's a, it's a kind of wind. A gust. It's a, yeah, there you go. It's a soft, gentle breeze. Heroes, I expected you not to know then. You're taking the wind out of my sails now. Um, <laughs> uh, he, so, heroes with a wind blast spell only. While casting wind blast, in addition to moving the target, roll to damage for each hit scored. Who cares? Meh. So, you want to make wind blast <laughs> even more expensive. <laughs> 
You're using oh, Windblast. You need a really good Windblast. Think about your reasons for why you're using Windblast as well, right? You're using it to push an enemy unit just out of range because they're a nasty unit and they're mm-hmm. like about to charge you. Or you're pushing them just out of line of sight if you're really cagey and you get like a sweet angle. Or you're pushing them off an objective. Doing one or two damage into the bargain there, like even with like Windblast five or whatever is just like it doesn't particularly help any of those circumstances <laughs> like if you yeah. want to do damage cast lightning bolt don't take yeah. a wind blast and then spend an extra 20 points on your already slightly overcosted spell to do one yeah. or two damage into the bargain like it's not a bad item for your cloud giants though it'd be good if you could take multiple yeah, oh, if yeah you, but if it's you, only characters as well if you could just heroes. pass out zephyr crowns like it's a yeah. like it's a bloody hat sale at a bargain basement or it's something a zephyr bracelet zephyr necklace yeah zephyr <laughs> shorts wind shorts I, I don't know even then do you really want to pay 20 extra points on all your units mm, i don't know that you do not. yeah yeah it's an o for me as well yeah do they read sometimes i wonder like gw used to do this a lot worse than these guys do in general like in the mantic does but Sometimes I think, do you just read the paragraph once before you price it, or do you just like go, oh, yeah, or whatever? Because <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, like they're great, right? But and in in instances like the Ensorcelled Armor, it's a case of it got nerfed to the point of no longer being useful. Mm. But then they write one like this, and I don't know, just get carried away with crazy words like Zephyr and forget about how many points <laughs> it is. Like, this should be five points. Five points, yeah. For some extra damage on a spell that you don't use. Okay, so next we've got the Banner of the Griffin for 25 points. This is the always take item. Uh, Unit gains the Railing 1 special rule or increases it by 1 if it's already got it to 2. Great. Extra nerve for everyone? Sure, why not? Yeah, I'm not so sure actually. I took it quite a bit for a while and what I was finding... (laughs) Is it just the way that the dice fell, I suppose, a lot of the time? Is it kept making my unit that would have routed waver? Well, you're playing Ratkin as well. <laughs> and that was yeah. a bad thing because I've got it on the Banner of the Griffin. Quite often, you're going to put this on a guy that like, is a banner bearer appropriately enough. Yeah. So, of course, they've got inspiring. So, when you roll exactly your nerve value and then you go an extra rallying and you waver, that more often than not, that's a bad thing. Mm. Because you, you want to be able to use the re-roll. You can't re-roll then, right? Especially if it's a bad roll, like you roll, like the opponent rolls like a 10 or something to, to knock them off. Mm. Yeah. You want to take the re-roll. And in the case of Skaven in particular, because your units are generally really cheap, you, it, wavering is almost always worse than dying. In my experience, like you want that unit to be not there anymore so that the unit behind it can charge or something, or you want it to just hold. You know, you don't want it to bloody stand there with its dick in the wind, just getting in the way of everyone else. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. So, for all the armies that I play, this is great. I love it. No. Nah. Yeah, it's very good for mine as well. Uh, I guess I guess if you don't already have rallying <laughs> everywhere as well. Yeah, don't take this if it's Skaven. You'd think you would want this with Skaven. It's a it's a we well, with Ratkin, apologize. Uh yeah. Ratkin of rats. Don't uh, don't uh, take it on Ratkin if you want, but I've actually found it not too great. <laughs> Just don't if your name's Hugh and you play like Hugh and you have Ratkin. <laughs> don't if you're one of the two percent of players out there that play Ratkin, I bet you really love it when I get on the podcast because it's all I like to talk about. <laughs> I don't mind putting this on a bigger footprint unit as well to share the love. Yep. So everyone does put it on banner bearers a lot, but mm-hmm. they have only a tiny little base usually. So putting it on a, a regiment, for example, gets mm. that extra spread of rallying. Yeah, I, think I like for that. The, on the individual, just so you can get the rallying where you need it to be. Yeah. Well, one of those hordes with it all isn't bad, though, where you where it covers, like, a big part of your line, yeah. but they've yeah. already got, like, three plus to hit and crushing one or what have you. Maybe you go, you know what, f*** it, I just want to get everyone. Mm. Hang and on. And if that's your game plan, if you're going to be grouping up and you're hope planning to have multiple units kind of stay together, yeah. I forgot to yeah, ask beforehand choice. if we're allowed to swear on this one or not. Yeah, I, I can bleep this. That's fine. Okay. Let's bleep that. As long, I'll try yeah, to stay the clean. other one was just was so much and I couldn't be bothered, so <laughs> it's not going to happen so much in this one. Okay, cool. <laughs> and next, we've got the loot of insatiable. I think that's right. Darkness. Insatiable. Uh, insatiable. Ooh. All right, insatiable. Uh, it cannot be satiated. <laughs> it's a uh, <laughs> Jesus. You didn't need uh, to add the slurp there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it gives the hero bane chant two spell yep. um, for twenty five points. It's great. I love this one as well. Not all armies can take it by their wizards. That's uh, in bane chant, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, judging, looking at the picture though of the loot with like, which is obviously like a heavy metal loot with skull and crossbones and stuff loot. on it. <laughs> yeah. That's just Pentagram. this has got to be up there for skull. one of the most gangster items in the game. Yeah, <laughs> they need a model with it. Yeah, that's not Ronnie. All right, it's pretty rad. So for wizards that don't have bane chant or armies that don't have access to bane chant but would really like to, is that, mm. is that their circumstance? Uh, an, an added bonus here is when you put it on your BSB, like your banner bearer. So they get inspiring, which most mages don't, and you get bane chance. So you can actually cut mages out of your list. Yeah, because sometimes um, a mage will cost quite a bit more just to get access correct. to it. Yeah. Only, only a word of warning I'd say is be wary of bane chant two, because bane chant three is a lot better. Uh, three comes off <laughs> yeah. a huge percentage of the time. Bane chant yeah. two, uh, one in four times on average, it should not come off, but it feels like more than that when you really need it. Mm. Very true. Most wizards only have Bane Chant 2, though. Yeah. That's true. Not all of us can be fabulous, Ratkin. <laughs> okay. Shroud of the Saint. Uh, units with this heal spell only. So, sorry. Units with the heal spell only. This item increases. <laughs> you put the, the wrong units. emphasis <laughs> on the wrong syllable. <laughs> emphasis on the, yeah, definitely <laughs> the wrong syllable. So, uh, if you got the heal spell, rock it. This item increases the unit's heal N value by 3. For example, heal 3 becomes heal 6. Hmm. I don't know, 25 points for an extra heal. If you just had a heal, you probably wouldn't take it. But if you're going for one of those really annoying, frankly, I think this is one of the most annoying strategies you can do in Kings of War is take heaps of heal. I'm not even sure why it's so annoying, but I'm sure other players can relate to this idea of having like three or four anything. bloody dudes yeah. there healing. And certain armies, it just screws you over because you rely on those sort of incremental bits of damage to build up rather than mm. hitting with some massive impact or whatever. And, yeah, the heals can be really annoying. But he- in that circumstance, yeah, heal three to six, 25 points is less than another wizard, if that's what your wizards are doing. And your healing charm is 30 points, and that's heal three as well. Mm. Yeah, I think this item's fine. Yeah, I think it's very situational. Yeah, if- like, if you chuck it on, like, a Lich King, um, replace his surge with heal for whatever reason, you can get it up to, like, a heal nine. It's quite misnamed, isn't it, really, Shroud of the Saints? Because I feel like you're almost exclusively taking this in, like, evil necromantic armies of doom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the point, so they're evil and they're still wearing the, the Saints Shroud, like, eh, suck it. Yeah, you could take it on your Elf Mage. I think she comes uh, vanilla with three, heal three. So you could get heal six with Elite. It's not bad. Elite built in, yeah. All right, next, Brew of keen Inus. keen Inus. It should be keen eyedness, right? Yeah. No, it's just Inus. There's no word Inus. Inus <laughs> isn't a word by itself. Yeah, you don't go to an optometrist and say, how's my Inus? <laughs> oh, you've got a severe case of keen eyedness. <laughs> the, unit, the unit is plus one to hit with normal ranged attacks, so no breath weapons and whatnot, and you can't use it by hordes or legions, so try to disincentivize. Is that a word? Yeah. Your archer hordes with elite having plus one to hit as well. Yeah, two plus to hit with it with with a reroll is uh, kind of unfun. So only on regiments and troop now. So you're looking at what twelve attacks usually max, ten or twelve yeah. attacks. Yeah, you want them to be pretty good attacks. I think you want like several piercing to make this worth the thirty points. Mm. What about it's ogre shooter? Those, An ogre shooter troop? No, but you, regiments. regiments sorry. You, you don't take them because it's only nine. Yeah. And they just kind of disappear. I'm trying to think of a yeah. regiment that you wanted on. Well, I don't think you'll find one. So, like, I think the best that I've come up with Flame is... Flame bearers are good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they have a yeah. lot of attacks. Well, it's only 10, but they've got piercing one in range four. So it goes to three. Mm. Yeah, and that's the same as the elf um, archers. So they go from fours to threes, but no piercing. Hmm. I don't know. No, nah, I'm going to pass on this one. I don't, I don't like that anymore. Yeah, it's. it's I think it's just the points. Yeah. For some, for some reason, just I guess the nature of the game or whatever, it was a bit too strong on some hordes and legions, which is where the only place you wanted to use it. So then they nerfed it in a similar way to Ensorcelled Armor to the point where you just don't really find a place for it anymore. Mm. Mm, well, they removed it, didn't they, for Clash of Kings 17 and then mm-hmm. brought it back in 18? Brought down a watered yep. down version so that you can go to the optometrist and be like, I've had too many brews, bro. My eyes <laughs> My My is not good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the last item that we'll talk about is the medallion of life. Um, so it can be taken by heroes with the individual rule and they get regen five. This one was nerfed too, wasn't it? 
Uh, it was removed um, because everyone would just take a tree herder with this. Mm. And then they've sort of brought it back. Regening tree herder. <laughs> yeah, no I think they added the individual rule yeah. as the nerf. Yeah, It's okay. I wouldn't take it because of the armies that I play. I'd rather put more hitty stuff than try and be more defensive and because that's what this item is basically. Yeah, it's yeah. So you've got to have individual and you've got to have generally a really high nerve to make regeneration c- count for anything really because yeah. it's, if it's low then you're just not going to be rolling many dice before you get knocked off, uh, if any at all. Uh, and then yeah. if you roll like one or two dice and regen and you get one back, like who cares, right? So it's, this, is, this is for, you know, and again, named Medallion of Life, this is for your undead characters that are... Uh, that are like that have like nerve a musquillion. The Berserker Lord for dwarves. Berserker Lord's feel is seventeen, defense four. Yeah, he's not too expensive. He's one twenty. Give him a amount for thirty points. So plus the medallion, it's one eighty. Feel is seventeen. Regen five. Yeah. 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 That's that's, that's probably the best. That seems good. Curse Pharaoh is pretty good, but he's already got regen five. So. Mm. Uh, he does already have regen five. Yeah. yeah. What about a vampire or something like? They've got uh, quite high defense. Pretty, no, they've got. They've got a high defense, but pretty average nerve, 14, 16. 14, 16 is not average. But yeah, that's yeah. 14, 16 is, that's, that is sounds, actually Sounds average. very brave <laughs> to me. Yeah, 250 points, so. Okay. But for, as for heroes, it's pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no thanks. What's next? Yeah. Nah. Oh, wait, that's, well, that's it. it. That's all of the that's items. It. We're up to spell magic. Uh, what we might do is we'll give people a chance to take a break if that's what they like to do. Uh, we'll be back in a moment after the break. Yeah, I assume you're on the edge of your seat being like, man, I really need to go to the toilet, but I can't wait until they finish doing these items. Now's your well, chance. Just take your phone with you. Anyway, we'll be back in a moment. And we're back. Uh, hopefully you've uh, relieved yourselves. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump straight into spells, uh, the common pool spells, opposed to the living legends that we'll talk about later on. The legendary spells, sorry. So these spells can be taken by any non-living legend unit that has one or more spells already, or has the ability to take spells. That's pretty much the summary. So anyone that can take spells can pick these ones here. They're additional costs. And I think Mind Fog is first, Benson. So Mind Fog 1. It's only 10 points, 36 inch range. Instead of causing damage, if one or more hits are scored, then the target must take a nerve test at the end of the shoot phase. And the nerve test should be treated as if the target had been had taken damage. So basically, no damage, take a test. It's not bad for 36 inch range, I think. Yeah, I rate mm. this on any wizards that have really short range spells. Uh, mm. You know, if you've already got lightning bolt, it's probably I don't know, it's borderline useful even then, actually, uh, just for that for the twenty four to thirty six range kind of situation. But in particular, if you're just a one of those wizards that sort of has nothing but bane chant and heal or those kinds of effects that are only useful when you're in combat or when something near you is damaged, it's very close, and you're like, you know what? Bugger it. For 10 points, I can just reliably have an effect 50% of the time causing a nerve, just being able to reach out and touch. Really helpful. Instead of trying to charge in with one attack on with mm. some dude hitting on fives or six. Especially since a lot of those armies have a, a bit of a lacking in range fire power department. You know, your your uh, herd and your orcs and those kinds of armies that don't have heaps of shooting. So having that one extra thing that can reach out and touch a very badly damaged unit, particularly one that might be a lot faster than your army, say, and they're running yeah, away and trying to hide cool. on the other side of the board or something. Just mm. just being like, mind fog. And then being like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm out of here. That's pretty <laughs> good. Can't see My mind. <laughs> now, I totally agree with your your summary there, Hugh. So 36, it's really a good range, obviously, for a height four. Somebody that sits over the top and can ping a, ping a test of somebody it's that's really trying to hide. can't hide from them, hmm. Yeah, um, but the only issue and the only drawback, which is probably a, a necessary evil, is that it's 50% of the time. So in your scenario where you did have your lightning bolt three, um, you'd still pick your lightning bolt. Yeah, but if they're in range of the lightning bolt, obviously yeah. you would. But if they're between yeah. 24 and 36, then you might do this. Very and it's only true. 10 points. Yeah. yeah, it's not bad for 10 points. Yeah, I feel like uh, use this if you... Yeah, in those kind of circumstances where your wizards don't have... 
a lot of long range stuff and use it when you don't have other good little cheap items to whack on things I think because I don't know 10 points is is a cheap throw away but if your wizard is reliably going to be casting something else all the time then you might not use it all game uh, mm. quite yeah, frequently yeah. That, that'll probably be the case well as if your wizard's going to have two or three turns of downtime where they're not casting something and that's quite consistently the case then this is a great 10 points yeah I've also seen it used on undamaged units so against some of those heroes that have terrible nerve effectively yeah, good um, point. so they just sort of ping that off and you can get a lucky waiver or even a, a route there yeah turn it into um, like a 25 percent chance or something yeah. that's actually not that bad you know you never know and it can can work on some troops as well boom wagons they got super low nerve yeah what, what's that like 810 like 810 yeah mm, buddy boom wagons god <laughs> <Bane of existence. laughs> because it's often that people try and shoot it but it's defense five and it just kind of doesn't do anything yeah but even like your uh, little troops of like flea bag riders what are they 911 so that there would be another good candidate even if you just make them waver because that's annoying mm. all right mm-hmm. let's yeah. move on to next you could also take weakness for two uh 20 points as uh, so they roll two dice 24 inch range maybe cast uh on enemy units that are engaged in combat Instead of causing damage, if one or more hits are scored, then the target unit has a negative one modifier when rolling to damage enemy units during their next turn. So anti-crushing strength. Yep, opposite of crushing strength. Any rolls the unit makes of natural six will still cause damage. Okay, so they can still damage toughness six things, uh, defense six things. This effect only applies once. Multiple castings of the same target have no effect. So I'm pretty sure this one here got a buff in Clash of Kings 19. Mm-hmm. So it was only 18 inches range. Now it's up to 24. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Uh, a little known fact, or not little known now, but <laughs> we- <laughs> weakness also impacts shooting. So it's not just a, a combat. Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought of that for some reason. Yeah, they can't draw their bowstrings back. They're like, eh, God. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <It's so> Smithers. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's nothing too exciting. I'd rather Bane Chant than Weakness most of the yeah. time. It just feels better. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just is better because you can plan for Bane Chant. While it's Weakness, they might be like, well, I'm just not going to charge or uh, I wasn't going to charge anyway or I charge in and then just roll well regardless and it doesn't really matter or I've got Crushing 3 and you go to 2 and I don't care and there's a lot of circumstances where Weakness isn't good. While it's Bane Chant on my Berserkers, always good. Yes. Yeah. I think weakness has a lot more value when you're targeting shooting uh, units. So your defense five effectively go up to defense six. Yeah, I can see that. In yeah, particular, when yeah. well, it doesn't effectively go up to defense six because it's only against yeah, was, one I was unit. Just thinking yeah. uh, what the hell are you saying? Sir? But but yeah, I mean, twenty four inch range is good. It'd be good against those really nasty shooting units. You have to target something that's really packing a punch, though. If you're targeting something that's shooting like eight shots with no crushing or something, then it's not even worth the energy. I, I, I quite like it, but that's all good. Uh, Dream Life is next, isn't it? Yes. So Dream Life 6 for 25 points, uh, downside 6-inch range, and you can target enemy units that are in combat. You roll the damage as normal with a piercing 1, which is pretty handy, but the kicker for this one, if any one or more points of damage are scored, you can uh, heal yourself or a friendly ally within 6 inches. A non-allied unit within six inches. Yeah, I like this spell. It's like healing, but not because it deals damage as well. And you can target it in in units so in combat, so that's pretty sweet. So you're shooting their chaff, which usually has low defense, and healing your defense five six guys. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting that you can heal other units rather than just yourself all the time. That's really worth remembering. Mm. If it was just yourself, mm, probably not. Mm, yeah. So I love this in ogre armies where they get the buffs. So they can get like drain life ten. Mm. Yeah, because it's a common spell. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. But the six inches is is a bit of a an issue. Yeah, you want it to be impactful. I mean, twenty five points. I get the swing where you're doing a bit of damage and you're getting a bit of heal at the same time. So it's kind of doing double duty. But twenty five yeah. points, you probably cast it once. I mean, it's got a six inch range. You got to target an enemy. If you really sneaky bugger like those kind of gobos on wolves and those kinds of uh, characters then maybe you'll get it off two or three times, in which case it would be awesome. But getting mm. it off once, it is actually a reasonably expensive investment when you think of it that way, particularly if you just fluff the dice. Mm. So sure. Because you're still rolling to damage with normal. So if you're casting it on a high defense opponent, you might not even get anything through. Yeah, it's piercing yeah, it one, piercing but one. yeah, you're right. You might still not. Like, if, it, if they're defense five, 
and it's only six dice, you get about three hits and then about one and a half wounds. So when you think of it that one, way, one if two. that's your one time, then not great. Bobo. Hmm. All right, what's next? Hex. Next hex. Hex two. Ten points. Thirty inch range. Instead of causing damage, if one or more hits a score, the target enemy unit receives a point of damage each time it rolls to hit with a spell during its next turn. So, And they don't take nerf tests. So basically you cast it on a wizard and then they go, I don't want to cast any spells because I'm going to hit myself. So yeah. 10 points. Yeah, I don't even know if they do though necessarily, right? Because they might just be like, well, who cares? I'm going to take some damage. At least I don't take a nerf test. Yeah, that's right. They've still got to throw something at me to, to get rid of me. Depends on the mm. wizard. Definitely. Yeah. Thirty inch range is worth is worth double noting. Stops the surges. So hex combo with mind fog. That's what you want. Twenty points. Is there anyone you can whack this on cheekily that is more like a fighty kind of character but has access to spells but then doesn't get to use spells very often because you know they're always in combat or perhaps they're just for whatever reason they're not like a very spelly kind of wizard so you might just be like you know what i'm going to chuck this cheap spell on them and just piss off enemy wizards yeah tree herder tree herder yeah yeah maybe like even something like vampires and stuff right because they have quite limited access to spells and maybe they're not getting to cast say bane chant or or surge or whatever because they're fighting in combat a lot but turn one 30 inch range irritate the crap out of a wizard for 10 points seems decent. Yeah, it's yeah. only 10 points. I think that was that's the important bit. Yeah, but it's not it's not the only important bit. The fact that it's a bit like mind fog, it has the same problem with if you've got a the reason I'm talking about those wizards that don't have much else going on is that if you're consistently casting other spells without wizard, which you should be if you if you're taking a wizard, right? Like you should be using mm-hmm. other spells, then you're probably just not really ever casting it. But would you take it if it was 20 points? Even in that situation where you've got a character that just has nothing to do for one or two turns? Probably no. not. No. Yeah. So, yeah, I think 10 points is the sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I still wouldn't take it because I'm taking other things. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think there might be a bit of hidden power there, particularly if you hex, like have a couple of hexes in the army, so you're just reliably doing that to enemy wizards all the time. And then maybe you've got Shot a smattering of yeah. fairly low damage range firepower. Like you've got like your your unit of little archers or whatever that just pips off a damage or two. Just really consistently taking out enemy wizards for fairly low cost seems okay. Mm. Yeah. My, my only issue with this is, like, pr- predominantly we only make tournament lists, is the amount of armies that have low cast value wizards. So, like, they've only mm. thrown three or four dice. Um, they never throw on lots. And how many times do you not have a wizard at all? So, you've effectively just burnt 10 points. So, for me, it's too situational. But it's only 10 points. No. Nah. Yeah, I think you can afford to be situational for 10 points, but yeah, I see what you're nah. saying. All right, fine. <laughs> 10 points, that's that's a lot of points, I reckon. Not as in I know. <laughs> <laughs> saying no, 10 points isn't a lot. Anyway, it let's get on to the next set. So, uh, so that's all the common spells. What are the legendary spells? What do they do? Uh, legendary spells, they, they represent powerful magic, a forbidden law and a temperamental incantations. Oh, okay. Legendarily temperamental, these ones, some of them. Uh, legendary spells follow the same requirements for which units may and may not take them as common pool spells, uh, which is about as much words as it took to actually write out those, <laughs> those rules anyway, um, with the added restrictions that each legendary spell may only be taken once in an army and that they may not be taken by allied units. Uh, furthermore, these spells may only be taken by heroes. Uh, some legendary spells may only be successfully cast by the caster once per game, and if so, they will have a note in their description to this effect. So you get one legendary spell, you can get to cast it once, and that's it. So it's a one-shot mm-hmm. number. Uh, the number of dice rolled when using a legendary spell is never modified for any reason, such as artifacts or special rules. I feel like these spells should be should be called cantrips or something rather than legendary <laughs> spells because legendary spells like implies this big awesome like impactful thing but a lot of them are like these little tiny one use numbers so it's a bit it's a bit weird a tweak. Uh, last last little paragraph here on legendary spells is that there's a single legendary spell for each of the three alignments and only armies of that alignment may choose to take them to take a spell simply pay the given points cost add them to the eligible unit yeah, uh, some units may have these spells in their profiles already, including spells of alignments that they could not normally choose to take. In which case, the spell cannot be taken again by another spellcaster in the army. So it still counts right. as your one. Sorry, I just my eyes glazed over. Can you just summarize that? You can only take one of the. Uh, you can only take one of them. That's it. Right. And if you're the wrong <laughs> alignment, you can't take it. 
Sure. Okay. Yeah. What's the first spell that we've got? The cheapest, one of the cheapest that we have in these legendary spells. What is it? Blinding Light? Yep. Yeah. yeah, Blinding Light 1 for 10 points. 18 inch range uh, can only be targeted against heroes, monsters, and war machines. If you do manage to roll that dice and get a hit, then they're disordered for the next turn. Doesn't seem very legendary, does it? No. No. It's not legendary 50% of the time. <sighs> yeah. One. I don't know. Nah. One chance nah. of 50 50 with only 18 inch is... range. If you fail, you still get to cast it again. It has to go off. Yeah. Oh, you can cast this one every turn if you want no, to. No, you can't. Why not? Oh, wait, hang on. It says some legendary spells may only be cast successfully by the caster once per game. Yeah, what were you guys talking about? Okay. Which, one, which ones do you cast? So teleport. So there's always a note at the bottom um, that tells you if you can only use it once per game. Right, okay. Oh, uh, okay. I'm with you now. Yeah, sorry. There's such an immense amount of rules around <laughs> these spells for some reason. <laughs> it's probably in an FAQ, and I'm sure people on Facebook have asked that a bunch of times as well. Yeah, it, it just actually says <laughs> Okay, so end. blinding okay. light, you can cast more than once. But you'll probably only get one chance because you need to be within 18 inches of a war engine. Although, I suppose it's flyers, right? That's what you want it for. If you, if you manage to pip a war engine and stop it from shooting, then great. But a lot of the time, it's going to be to disorder flyers, right? So that you can then charge Yeah, the yeah but you, you can't target most... Uh, unless it's a monster flyer or a hero flyer, you can't target it. Yeah, but lots of flyers are monsters or heroes, though. Yeah. You know, your dragons yeah. or your chimeras or what have you. Yeah. But just, I guess... Wraiths and Eloha and the large cab that fly, mm. which is still pretty good around it. Mm, that's true, I suppose. Yeah, ten points. I'll probably take it on one. It's ten points, and you might be able to ground a character, which is good. Yeah, I guess it's pretty bloody narrow. It's not legendary. This should be. No, it's it's the temperamental bit. It's basically the same as that item that used to exist in the previous Clash of Kings, which did almost exactly the same thing. It was just a four plus, and you could put it on any unit. Mm. Mm. All right, bugger that. Tell us about bark skin here. Bark skin, uh, twelve inch range. Within that twelve inches, you can get chuck it on a friendly unit, including units engaged in combat. If a hit is scored, the target unit increases defense by one to maximum of five plus until the start of this next turn. So this is like, in a way, it's better than weakness because it means all units targeting them effectively mm. have that negative one modifier. It's also yep. half the cost of weakness. So Sounds good, right? Except uh, you only get one die. So you've got a 50-50 chance of your caster doing bugger all. I actually played around with this one a bit. I used it a bit on my um, uh, wizard bros uh, in the Ratkin. And I mm-hmm. found that wasn't brilliant. Like, I just tended to prefer to... I mean, they had often Lightning, Bolt, and Bane Chant available to them, which are great spells. So mm. in pretty much every situation, I found that one of those was a better option. If it was bark skin two for say fifteen Ooh, or yes. twenty points, then we then we could talk. But for some reason, it being legendary makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree dice. with that. Bark skin two for fifteen points, I'd take it. Bark skin one for ten, I don't. Yeah, it's, mm. it's just such a risk being like oh, I've got a fifty-fifty chance of it not working, and then if it does, my opponent might just roll such that it doesn't have a meaningful effect anyway. If it saves a unit and it's ten points, then great right but and that's your one yeah. shot with a spell that turn with that wizard that's yeah it. yeah if you could cast it in addition to another spell or something then like if legendary spells were as well as another spell then this whole list would be so much more interesting useful effective yeah wizards get more Agreed. interesting in general but instead you're replacing your probably superior spell with this other cheap spell temperamental incantation Potential. yeah <laughs> it's a bit underwhelming okay We'll move on on. Aura of Heroism, which is a two-dice spell for 15 points. Only neutral armies can take it. This is only 12-inch range, and friendly units and self only, including units that are engaged. Uh, hits don't inflict damage. Instead, if one or more hits a score, the target increases its waiver and route values by one. It also gains the Rallying 1 special rule and increases the value of Rallying if it's got it ready, up to maximum of two. So increase your waiver and route and gives them Rallying for 15 points. Yeah, so it's pretty good. It's not bad. Extra nerve, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not bad for for your neutral armies. You've got kings of men, ogres, forces of nature, herd, league of Rodia, and the trident realm. Okay. Yeah. So any of those dudes can use it. I think that's fine. I could see a few of them getting good use out of that. Hmm. Hmm. It's not it, everything we've said about the banner of the griffin. 
same thing with Aura of Heroism. Just you get extra nerf. It's fine. Move on. <laughs> it's also pretty good at targeting that um, banner bearer as well. Yeah. So you take it up to rallying two and it increases the bubble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which it, it's kind of weird how it increases the it increases the wave and route of that unit, but then that unit also increases the wave and route of everybody nearby. So, so if you if you did think that the rallying one increased it by a further one for whatever reason, which you could read it that way. It doesn't. The rallying one increases other things, but not the unit that actually has the rallying, to be fair. Correct. Yeah. Mm. Um, but still, yeah, generally pretty decent. I reckon for 15 points, you get you get your value out of that. Guiding Light is the next one, which is a two-die item. You'd be excused for thinking this is the good armies. It's not yet. We haven't got there yet. 12-inch uh, range. Hits don't inflict damage. Instead, if one or more hit is scored... For the remainder of the shooting phase, any war engines with the indirect fire or reload special rule get plus one to hit when targeting the unit this spell has been cast on. Once a hit is scored by this spell, it may not be used again by this caster for the remainder of the game. Rubbish. Rapola. Absolutely rubbish. So your wizard has to be close enough to the unit that you want to kill with your massive ranged fire of your war machines. You're going to want three of them because that's all it works with. And it's only plus one to hit with them. I, I'd like it more if it read, if this spell causes a hit by a war machine, then, you know, or a war engine or whatever, then you can't use it again, right? Because then it's had an effect. But what it actually says is, if a hit scored by this spell, so if you get to add plus one, if the spell affects the unit that you target, but the problem is that doesn't mean it's had any effect, because you've then got to shoot the war machine at it, and you've got to roll such that the plus one made a difference. That's the only yeah. circumstance in which this unit makes sense. So think of all the hoops you've got to jump through. Your wizard's got to be close to the thing you want to shoot, 12-inch range. You've got to hit with your two dice. You've then got to roll. If your war machine hits on a five, you roll a four. And then you never get to cast it again for 15 points. You've got to be bloody joking. The issue is you've got to sacrifice. Generally, you've got to sacrifice the caster to get to within 12 to have a big impact. So I could see it sort of working maybe with organ guns. That's the so only, like, yeah. yeah. So they've only got 24 range, so you could you could effectively march something up and then unleash like two or three organ guns. I'm thinking it. of the floor in terms of the effectiveness when we talk about like the floor of an ability versus the ceiling being, you know, the max. I'm probably thinking yeah. a bit too floor, thinking of only one war machine or whatever. If you've got like three or four war machines and they all get to add plus one, then yeah, it could be pretty sweet. But if this was just 12 inch range, use it as many times as you want, but you target your own war machine and give it plus one to hit, that'd be a better spell. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. reckon that's much better. Yeah. Oh, I like this next one. What is it? Oh, yes, teleport. Teleport three. So it's a 12 inch range. Uh, you can target your friendly infantry heroes with the individual special rule, though, um, and they can effectively make a 20 inch move. Um, so I know this one here had like 600 posts in uh, the fanatics. <laughs> Um, but effectively, just if it's successful, pick up the dude, move it within 20 inches and position it any way you want. Yeah, as if it had fly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that was the confusing bit. Just pick it up and teleport it. Yeah. Everyone was focusing on the fly too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... It probably should just... Yeah, it shouldn't say fly, maybe. Um, the, I suppose they thought that would make it easier to understand, but it actually ended up making it harder, didn't say it? Say pick but, up and place. Mm. Yeah. Because it's still an individual, so it can still rotate as much as you want. It's not like it's limited to only rotating 90 or what have you. You can put it anywhere, rotate it wherever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I think the confusion around it was that because it is a fly and it's a fly move, then you couldn't actually cast. So you can effectively teleport your guy 20 inches and then use the shooting phase for that teleported character. So the way that it was written would say that it couldn't because they've just done a big fly move, but they eroded that. So now you just pick it up, move it, and it can shoot. Good. Okay, so you can still shoot after it at the end of all that. Right, I get that. That's cool. You can also move and the, the character that you're casting it on and then cast it on them, which I think is kind of... Critical. Yeah. So, so you don't, you're not moving only 20 with that character. If you want to move it up, say say it's got a, a movement 6 infantry figure, you move it 12, but still keeping within 12 of the wizard, obviously. Maybe the, maybe he's hanging out you yeah. know, off to the side or what have you. And then you cast that 12-inch range, move the wizard up, you know, just a walk. You get within that 12-inch range, and then you flap him across the board. So you can actually get some pretty serious distance out of it rather than just the 20 inches. Yeah. 
For sure. Um, and also important to note that this is, once it's successful and you've teleported somebody, you cannot teleport other people. Boo. No more having fun. Just one time. One use only. <laughs> Stop having fun over there with your <laughs> with the, all the other likely targets that you're going to have for this spell, <laughs> given that you've just done it on your... And he's flop, flapped off into the distance. Yeah, you're <laughs> not going to run after him and teleport like, again. What have you... And have you got two other assassins hanging out there ready for it to be cast on? <laughs> no. You're the only one taking <laughs> <No>. three assassins. <laughs> <laughs> so what if I do? <laughs> Jokes aside, I think teleport's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, pretty it's cool. good for shenanigans, I think, uh, more than anything else. Um, and it can also really make people think. Um, and I think that's... The best bit about yeah, shenanigans. Getting, uh, choppy character at the back. It's the surprise okay. thing. It's for your caster that doesn't have nasty range spells, uh, perhaps. They've got, again, that those short range spells and they want something to do in that first turn. Because you're going to cast it probably mm-hmm. first turn, maybe second turn, and then that's it. The, the fact that you can't cast it again actually doesn't really matter because you're probably only going to have one opportunity anyway. Uh, and you flap your dude over there. But first turn, get your... Uh, your nasty combat character or even your mediocre combat character. No, you, you take your Dwarven King mm. with the Crystal Pendant and you flap it in front <laughs> of someone. Yep, I, I can get around that. Or, or just uh, your, you know, your assassin kind of character to, and just flap him up near War Machines. So, good against War Machines, right? Yeah. Because they're not yeah, expecting right. it because they don't have the wings. Especially if you've mm. got another nasty infantry character with the wings as well and they both get up there behind enemy units like... And you can start, you know, causing a bit of bit of grief. What if your character's got the mournful blade and then you just pop him in the character bubble or, and then he can kill all yeah. the characters? Or just those obnoxious flamer dudes from the demons. Uh, I forget what they're called. Uh, but Afrit? The Is that Afrit. Oh, I yeah, so those those guys are nasty pasties. If they get behind you and just start flaming you, you kind of got to turn around and deal with them because if... Which you really don't want to do, you know. You don't you don't want to turn your big infantry in around to deal with them or something. But if you don't, they're going to toast your ankles. <laughs> Probably a bit more than that. <laughs> mm. All right, we're well, moving on. We're going to go to the Veil of Shadows. This is for evil armies only. Uh, three dice, fifteen points, twelve inch range. Friendly units uh, only, including those that are engaged in combat. If one or more hits a scored, instead of causing damage, the target gains the stealthy special rule until the next turn. Fifteen points, stealthy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's three dice, so it's pretty reliable. Uh, you've only got. A I don't w- think you'd be hitting dudes in combat because they're just going to get fought back. It's stealthy only affects shooting. Yeah, that's right. Sure. That's right. So it's only good more than likely the first couple of turns of the game. And of course, you've got to bear in mind that chances are, if stealthy really matters for whatever unit is going to shoot at you, they might just shoot another unit. You know. Yeah. But- I mean, I'm thinking of one thing. If you put it on a decent horde, they go in in front of everyone else, destroy a unit that they hit, and then say you're facing a gun line, you're not going to take as much. It, it doesn't matter that they're out there by themselves trying to cop all the shooting because they're stealthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. obviously it's at its best against gun lines in general, but uh, the other the other way, like valuable unit moves on to objective in forest. Perhaps a valuable unit has the potion of the caterpillar, as they all too frequently do, uh, mm. and then you give it stealthy as well, so then you're at the, the negative two to hit from shooting and negative one against spells. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's pretty decent. That's only fifteen points, and you've only got a one in eight of failure if if math hammer is allowed on this podcast um, with <laughs> with three dice at four plus. So so unlike a lot of these other legendary ones, like you're actually really likely to get it to work. Mm. Mm. I can see it working with uh, the first full coven formation. So where you where that takes uh, the soul reaver infantry. So they, they hit like a like anything, they hit very hard, but they do get killed pretty quickly. So if you target your stealthy on those, um, you can get them into the fight, potentially. Yeah, I can see that. So it, it's a bit of a niche pick, I think, definitely, but at least it is a pickable niche pick. It's too bad that that's the evil army only one, because unlike, say, the Aura of Heroism, which seems quite generically useful for all neutral armies, I'd say, this one, which yeah. is good for forces of abyss, Abyssal Dwarves, Goblins, Orcs, Undead, Twilight King, Empire of Dust, Rat King, Varanger, and <gasps> Night Stalkers. And I think Night Stalkers already have Stealthy. Yeah, well, indeed. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, it definitely is only of relatively limited effect, isn't it? Yeah. I think, once again, I think we were mentioning back a little bit, but it's another one of those ones that, depending on your meta, it increases or decreases in value. Yeah, if everyone's playing Goblin Gunlines, which I've found that's to be it. very hard to deal with, then yeah. yeah, it goes up in value a bit. 
But then those gun lines, oh, I don't know. You're going to cast it and then they're just going to shoot something else a lot of the time. Anyway, yeah. critters call. So we've got some critters to call in uh, with <laughs> eight dice to do it with. The legendary critters. Call me your critters. 24-inch uh, range. Roll to damage as normal. If one or more points of damage are scored, the target unit is disordered. Once a hit is scored by the spell, it may not be used again by this caster for the remainder of the game. Because you ran out of critters. So it's a, it's a weird one because unlike Blinding Light, which is an 18-inch range, only enemies, heroes, monsters, so that's the really narrow version and you've got one die, that's 10 points. So I'll remind you of that one. This is double the price, but you get eight dice. So it, this is as close to guaranteed as you're ever going to get. Eight dice. All you need to do is one hit and they get disordered. So this is the, mm-hmm. I really need to disorder that unit a lot, and you've virtually guaranteed 24-inch range, 8 dice. I actually don't mind this. And don't forget, it does do damage, and it's not limited to what you're casting against, like Blinding Light. Mm. That's right. 20 points seems like a bit of a tall order, perhaps for a one-use spell, but one-use spell that is exceptionally reliable and does something that other things don't necessarily do in the form of a ranged disorder, a long-range disorder at that. Uh, this is the anti-dragon spell for those armies that have yes. heaps of trouble dealing with dragons that keep flying behind you. Or, uh, unlike the other spell, Elohai, um, Elohars, um, Shaloms, you know, you name it. You know, any of those kind <laughs> of irritating, you know, angels that are trying to greet you pleasantly with their, their swords of doom. This bad boy. Yeah, Ogre Shooters, another amazing yeah. candidate to smash against this. So, they were always taken off wounds. So, Pretty if you can take him out for one turn. Your Since critters. you're mainly wanting to disorder, because it, it, it's good against shooting units too, unlike the other one, which is 18-inch yeah. range, most shooting units that doesn't even hit uh, because they're not necessarily heroes or monsters or what have you. Mm. Um, this can hit yeah. any your ogre shooters. If, if your ogre shooters are about to hammer your army, your most important unit, you go, right, 24 inches, you're not firing no matter what. Plus, I might pip a damage or two on you and you never know. You might even run away. But... But, yeah, anti-dragon, it's got multi-uses. It's only 20 points, but for armies that struggle with uh, maneuverability in particular, wanting to rock something in place or be anti-gunline, anti-gunline, anti-dragon, there's a lot of armies that struggle with yeah. those two sort of archetypes. I think this is this is better than it first reads. I think this yeah. spell was cast on me in at CanCon and it didn't go off. <laughs> what? It didn't go off, like it didn't hit. <laughs> That's right. It didn't work. That's oh. that's <laughs> like one two three. Were you playing Hugh? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. There was goblin luck. I was, yeah, goblin luck. Yes. Eight dice. None of them four plus. Yep. Crikey, that is mm. that is quite uncanny. Okay, but otherwise it's pretty good. Yeah. So as long as yeah, it's it's good for shutting down elves. Um, I've had it cast on me once or twice. So first turn they got it, moved up, cast it, did a couple of wounds. Mm. I was disordered. Couldn't do. Shit. Second turn, he charged, so they never got to Yeah, shoot. 20 points, and that's not an unrealistic scenario at all, I don't think. 20 points may seem like a lot, no. but 20 points to say your Archer Horde or your Ogre mm-hmm. Horde or what have you doesn't get to shoot once is, yeah, quite frequently Huge. the same as 20 yeah. points that unit doesn't get to shoot at all. Yeah, which is... Straight to the bank. Yeah, which is really, really solid. So, one point of approval for the critters. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Next, we have Martyr's Prayer. This is another high dice spell. Seven, 25 points. And this is for good armies only. So for 12-inch range, friendly units only, including units engaged in combat, instead of causing damage for each hit scored, remove one point of damage which has been previously taken by the target and transfer it to the caster. And the caster won't take a nerve test for damage taken this way. So last I heard, people were abusing this by taking the dwarven formation with all the massive... Uh, who's it? Yep. And getting a little dude behind them that can't be seen, and whatever damage those defense six monsters take, the uh, <laughs> the little dwarven wizard takes it back, takes yeah, it off, and so you just it. can't kill them. So it's the stone priest. I think the combo that floats around is stone priest with the regen item. Yep. Um, with martyr's prayer. Yep. Behind the wall of defense six. Yep. So he just heals them all up takes it all, and then regens back when he's taken. So it ends up mm. being pretty close to heal 7. Obviously, it's slightly worse than heal 7 because you're taking a few bips of yeah. damage on your guy, as long as your guy doesn't get like some cheeky, fast cavalry centaurs sweep around the flank and 
pop a few arrows in him and all of a sudden you're like, Shit, I've got, you know, 10 damage on me. Or mind fog. Or mind yeah. fog. Yeah. But I don't think stone priests have heal, so that's not a bad option for him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's a sort of heal seven for 25 points, sort of. Yeah. 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 So this, this will work for Basileia, Dwarves, Elves, the Brotherhood or Salamanders. There's actually less good armies than any other area. Mm. Five. I think they're going to check. Didn't Ronnie say he was going to try and swing the balance? Yeah, through the next release sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. By that, did he, did he mean I'm going to make the evil item the crappest of the three? No. That doesn't swing the balance much, no. does it? It <laughs> doesn't really make no. any difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Spell Siphon's next up. So Spell Siphon 2. Uh, so 18-inch range for 25 points. Enemy units that have the ability to cast spell, effectively it's two dice and you can steal uh, a spell, even a living legend spell, legendary spell, or powerful incantation. So yeah, two dice, if you hit, you can steal their uh, ability to use a magic spell that they've got, except search. Hmm. Which is, I don't know, it's it's good. It was one of those ones that everyone was sort of thinking about taking it right at the start, but I think the practical application of it and the amount that Kings of War requires you to plan uh, your turns, hmm. um, I don't think it's it's really planable. Yeah, I don't like... I mean, it's all, in theory, oh, I could take their whatever spell, but you can't guarantee that they're going to take that spell, and then you just wasted 25 points. Yeah, 18-inch yeah, range... Only two dice, 25 points. Yeah. What would you want to take? So, like, I mean, if you can take one of their legendary spells, I guess, but I think the more, the important part of this spell is that once you steal it, they can't use it the next turn. Mm. So you could stop Surge. Uh, no, you can't steal Surge. So you could <laughs> stop them using, like, one of their uh, Martyr's Prayer or whatever, or Blood Boil. But if, you, if they've got Martyr's Prayer and you've got Line to hit them, Mm. Yeah, that's, exactly. They're that's doing the other wrong. thing. Like you, you, you got eighteen inch range for twenty five points, two dice. You can also for roughly around twenty to thirty points, depending on the army and what have you, uh, jump jump on board with a lightning bolt five kind mm. of number. So f- you can get a safer twenty four inches away where nothing's charging you, let alone eighteen. Uh, get the you know get more reliably in range a bit earlier and just hit him with lightning yeah. bolt five and then you know do that a couple of times and then you don't have to worry about the spell anymore because the bloody thing's dead you know mm. yeah limited applications there's certain circumstances where that would be amazing it's very specific super specific yeah. mm. so I'm not sure if you can cast this one multiple times I don't think it's actually in the write up that it's a one use only no it's not one use only read it yeah yeah you can cast it multiple times. If you have another circumstance in which you're within 18 inches of <laughs> <a> spell casting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it shuts down the caster, I guess, from using their big spell that they may use. But, I don't know, too situational for me. All right. Then tell us about Alchemist's Curse. Alchemist's Curse is a 10 dice spell for 30 points. So, now we're getting into more legendary territory. 12-inch range. Instead of rolling to damage as normal, each roll under the target's defense including rolls of one, cause a point of damage. This roll cannot be re-rolled or modified in any way. It's a weird little So this addition. is to fight defense six. Hmm. So this was just a standard spell, um, Alchemist Curse six. Um, they've moved it over to legendary um, and buffed it up to ten dice. Yeah, well. just so you can't spam it. Yeah. yeah, just so you can't be like, oh, my army is just... The only weakness it has is defense five things, so I'm just going to take five instances of Alchemist Curse and it's not a real problem. Uh, 12-inch range is quite limiting as well for a range damage spell, but in a similar way to like the soul sucky kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's good. I think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good if you struggle against defense six stuff. Yeah, it is. Uh, 30 points. Yeah, you've got to write your list around that though. Yeah. Like if you're taking all defense four with maybe crushing one or two, which isn't really going to do much against Defense 6. I've seen quite a few people really get around Alchemist Curse, Blood Boilers, which we'll get to in a minute, and Drain Life. But I think what you've got to remember is when you're paying your 20, 30, whatever points for that spell, I think the normal course of the game, unless you're, again, like a goblin on a wolf and you're running around the flanks and you're trying to be dodgy, you'd be really close to the opponent, but you're not getting hit. Unless you're that kind of figure... You're probably casting it once. Mm. So it, it's quite a lot of points for one cast. If you get three or four casts out of it, again, then you, you're really laughing. But uh, yeah, you're paying for a wizard. 
you're paying 30 points on top of that wizard and you're probably casting the spell once. So you just need to bear that in mind, I think, with the with your choice. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer a breath weapon instead of this on my dudes who are getting that close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's the same price. I mean, I, I do often take the Diadem of Dragon kind. I love that that thing. So that's breath 10 instead of a 10-inch thingo. Alchemist Curse is better against, uh, you know, really tough things, and the breath weapon's better against really not tough things. So it's pretty mm. comparable, really. It's the same mm. number of points. They're both one of. Um, so you can get basically two breath weapons. Only yeah. problem is so this is uh, only on a wizard. But if your wizard, yeah, if your wizard true. can be mounted, see some armies the wizard can't be mounted, but the guy that can take the diadem can. So it depends on the army. But yeah, mm-hmm. if, if you can get the diadem and uh, another wizard, you know, bloke, bloke with diadem mounted and then wizard mounted with this, I think that could be pretty cool actually. So flag it yeah. on a mount is fifty five, and then you diadem eighty five, and you get a whiz who is the same points. Yeah. Oh, five points more. That's pretty good. Five points more seems fine, especially since you can give him another spell for utility if you feel like it, and yeah. you can, yeah, get um, get stuck into those stone golems and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So next up, we've got the one with the biggest amount of text. So Blizzard, two dice, 30 points, 36-inch range, blast D3 indirect. Yep. So caveat here, this got eroded to D6 because D3 was shit. I was just about to say that's absolute garbage, but... D6, is it? Okay. So, 2D6, that's fine. 36 inch range, decent damage spell. Mm. Indirect. Indirect. Is indirect always move or fire? Can you remind me? Uh, no, it means they don't get cover. Oh, okay. It's like a war machine that doesn't have piercing. That's right. Because mm. it's a blizzard. It's everywhere. It's just cold. So, you can <laughs> just, you can move and then, do, and then do that, right? 36 inch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can move, cast, and they don't get cover. I was fully loaded, ready to blast this one. I don't know how crap it is, but D6. <laughs> <laughs> six They've got to okay. rethink your strategy. <laughs> but you can't cast without line of sight, unlike you might think with indirect. You can't do... You still need line of sight. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you still. But, yeah, I usually have my mounted dudes, wizards, if they're going to do damage, just so they can see over my infantry and they can run away. I think take it. If if you want to damage, take it. 30 points it quite often won't hit. Uh, and when it does, D6, you might only get one or two hits. Pretty rarely are you going to get two hits and then be like, yeah, sweet, I've got like, you know, eight, yeah. nine, ten hits. Like, that's that's going to be a scarcity. A lot of the time, you're looking yeah. at more like three. But it does have a very long range. Or lightning bolt three for 30 points. Yeah. Yeah, it could be good on uh, elves as well with the elite to try and help get more hits, but... Yeah, I think yeah. that's okay, especially since uh, it's your only option here from all these legendary spells and indeed additional spells that can reach out that far and do a bit of damage. Uh, Mind Fog's the only other one with the same range, and that's mm. obviously not damage. So if you don't have access to Lightning Bolt, Fireball, blah, 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 uh, and you want that, especially if you're a cool Ice Wizard kind of vibe. <laughs> all yeah, Ice Wizards are cool. And I'm pretty sure one of the... There's a new unit that's got Blizzard, don't they? Isn't it like the Snow Lady? I can't remember. Uh, the Snow Giant. Snow Giants. Yeah. yeah. Sn- Sni- Snigent? Snigent. The Snigent. Snigent. You could ally them into your yeah. Cloud Giant army. Ooh. Depends. Depends on the uh, alignment of the Cloud Giants. Mm. Mm. I forgot to do the alignments <laughs> when I was writing. <laughs> neutral, surely. Mm, maybe. Anyway, Blood Boil is our last spell. Uh, 30 points, uh, 12 inch range. Often gets taken by annoying goblins. Uh, when rolling to hit, roll a number of dice equal to the amount of damage on the target unit. Roll to damage with piercing one. So any unit that takes this is going to be annoying. It's not just goblins. Yes, that's true. Any unit that takes this spell is annoying, but already annoying goblins often take this and become <laughs> more annoying. Let me put it that way. So, right. So yeah, this is your... Horde killer. Yeah. Because obviously if they've got heaps of damage on them already and they're a weaker unit, then they might just run away from anything. But Fireball, blood boil. Yeah, you've got 10, 15 yeah. odd wounds on your unit, then yeah, this really hurts. 12-inch range, you've mm. got to yeah. sometimes get your wizard up there and get his dick in the wind to cast it. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's so impactful in those circumstances that you don't really mind because you just kill the unit. That would have charged it anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, nah, it's it's handy particularly for heavy shooting slash magic armies. So where they're putting out a lot of output, and then you just use this to finish off. It is the mop. Is it better than Blizzard? Mm, I, I think, think it's so. it's a bit more situational than Blizzard. So Blizzard's turn one, it's great. You can't take both, of course. Can do the legendary, yeah. right? You can't take them both. Is, well, you could take them on separate characters, but 
I think Blizzard's good from turn one. Blood Boil's more of that turn four, five, six, seven specialist. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Blizzard, you can't... I suppose the main thing that makes Blood Boil better for me, on paper at least, is that you can take Lightning Bolt and Blood Boil, but you can't take Blizzard and then that, you know, Supernova spell. You could have kind of just doing Blizzard. Yeah. If you're just trying to do maximum range damage, that is obviously like different if you've got a different spell. But eh, yeah, Blood Boil. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. They're pretty good. The pe- people that that do a lot of dice and do Kings of War by numbers and take, you know, I, I say goblins again with like a million trumpets <laughs> and like get off the goblins. five <laughs> goddamn wizards and two units of ogre horde of ogre shooters allied in and those kinds of really just dick punching horrible armies uh, quite frequently take blood boil so I assume that it is uh, mathematically good <laughs> right because they take it it must be mathematically good yeah. oh. Mathema doesn't work that's the motto on this podcast uh, it works all too frequently against me though mm. have you ever played one of those uh, armies <laughs> it does quite often work <laughs> That's it. That covers all That's the it. magical artifacts and spells in the Clash of Kings 2019 edition. It's magic. Hmm. Mm, and temperamental incantations. Yes, don't forget the all temperamental right. ones. So, before we head off, i uh, just like to thank everyone that's been uh, chiming in on our Twitter and Facebook. Um, I know that we're picking up our game a little bit on the Facebook as well. Um, so with Not so much on the actual recording of episodes, but... No. <laughs> We're sorry. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, get a little bit more on that. Um, we'd love to see what you're working on as well. So um, if you've got something to share, particularly uh, not just Kings of War, but if you're anything else, chuck it on there. We'll comment, like, share, all of those things, um, and we'll see how we go. So a big thank you to everyone else. And Spoon, has uh, he's doing his challenge. He's no purchasing of miniatures challenge this year. Oh, yes. What is his current tally of purchased miniatures he is currently on zero so he's still going strong four months he's in. still going strong. he's uh, a quarter of the way in he's counting down the days i think <laughs> um but he's looking at buying a house at the moment i think so um yeah that's that's his next thing and smashing out the painting he is uh he's up at his challenge he set was do one model per day mm. across a whole year so he's on track 80 something models i think he said Hmm. Mm. Well, well done, Spoon. All right, we'll leave it there. He's contributing more to this episode than he usually is. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging in there. Thanks, Thanks for listening. Thanks, uh, guys. Let us know what you think. We will catch you soon. Right, bye, friends. See you at the other side of the table. See ya. Yeah, direct miss fire blowing up the game. Talking many war games is our aim. Rule books to advice, we cover it all. With the best tactics, we never fall. Bend some spoon and sell liquor in the mix. Math hammer doesn't work, it's a trick. Follow along, stay up to date. Comment, like, subscribe today. Come check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Direct Misfire. If you want to shoot us an email, directmisfire at gmail.com. Keep on casting magic spells, make sparkle fingers.